Welcome to this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector. This tutorial is an introduction to keyframes. When I first experimented with PowerDirector, I found keyframes to be very confusing. So I hope I can clarify some things for you in a simple and understandable way. What we're going to do is take this image of a red cap and drag it down into track number one. Then I'll lengthen the time, so we'll play with it for about 15 seconds or so. When PowerDirector brings in a static image, it keeps the proportions and puts it in the very center of the screen at maximum size. Let's assume I don't want it to start in that place. I'll use a keyframe. I double click on the picture. That brings me into my picture in picture designer, my pip designer. And then it opens up a very interesting window. If I look here, it starts at the end of the window. If I drag the slider back, it moves the playhead, or this is commonly called the scrubber down here, onto the left side. That's where I want to start. I want to start with the picture not in the center, so I need to change the position. We, the, all of these are different kinds of keyframes you can apply to this object. We have position, scale, opacity, rotation, freeform, and 3D depth. Now this one is not highlighted because I'm not working in a 3D, 3D display mode. But we're just going to focus on position to show a little bit about the power and use of a keyframe. So at this moment in time, now this doesn't necessarily mean the beginning of the movie. It's the beginning of the clip defined in your movie. Where this clip starts is 0, 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the position here. So I'm going to move my object with the mouse all the way to the left. And then I will click on a diamond. Where that's where I add or remove the keyframe. And now the keyframe starts here. If I go ahead and play the movie, in the preview window, there it is. It starts there and stays there. It's locked in that position. If I have no keyframes following a keyframe, it will automatically uh, control the behavior of that object for the rest of the duration of that clip. So what I'm going to do now is, let's say I want it to start there, but I want it to end somewhere else. So I have to move the keyframe before I touch the object. We'll move it in a, just a little over two seconds in. And then I'm going to move the object and let go. And when I do that, it automatically uh, adds a keyframe at the new position. If I hadn't moved my scrubber or my timeline, it would have changed the first keyframe. And if you have more than one keyframe in a... Uh, in a parallel channel here, you can move between one and the other with the left arrow or right arrow, and it shows you where you go. So now if I play this from the beginning, it will start there and it will move there. So this is the beginning uh, position, this is the ending position. Now I have my, uh, my scrubber or my uh, playhead over here, a little farther, about three almost four seconds in. Let's, just, let's do another change. Let's cl click on my image. Oop, I have to stop my player here. There. I have to move it back now. Uh, almost four seconds. And now I will move it you know, somewhere in the center. I'll actually move it so it's halfway off the screen. And now it created another keyframe. Go back to the beginning and we'll play it moves to the left and it moves down and it stays there again because this is the last controlling keyframe. If I want it to, to uh, stay in a p position for a period of time, I, I can, I need to stop my movie again, move my scrubber over to the right where now it's from here on it stays in this place. I can uh, click here and I right click and do duplicate previous keyframe. So these two control uh, uh, the position and that they're identical. You see the XY coordinates up here in my properties tab. Now why would I want to do that? Well if I want to make sure it doesn't budge an inch because now I'm going to add another one, 
I move over here and we move our cap up to the upper left and now it will be rock solid between these two because the actual uh, characteristics of these two keyframes are identical and this one is different so let's go back to the beginning we'll hit play and it goes to the left goes down to the bottom stays locked there till it hits the next keyframe and then it moves toward the last keyframe now the other thing you can do once you have a keyframe is you can move it you can click on it with a mouse oh again i have to be out of play mode click on it with a mouse and move it i can shorten the time it stays at the bottom i can speed up the time it moves from one position to another by moving them closer together or i can slow it down let's move this farther away now and i'll go back and go to the beginning we'll hit play in my preview window it goes there down and now it moves back slowly to the upper left if you have a keyframe that you don't want you can right click on it whoops again get out of preview mode right click on it and remove it there i've removed it uh, i can duplicate it or if i want to take all of them out I can right click on it and say remove all keyframes. There's another feature called ease in and ease out we'll deal with in another lesson. So that those keyframes only control position. We'll give you another lesson when you show you how to adjust scale and opacity. Mm -hmm.